Hey, it's Christina with Tina Girl Travels. I'm in Sitka, Alaska, and today I'm gonna to take you in and we're gonna check out the shops. Let's have a quick look on Google Maps where Sitka is located. Sitka is on the west side of Baranoff Island in the Alexander Archipelago and is only accessible by air and sea. Out of all the ports of call that we're visiting on our cruise, Sitka intrigued me the most because of its Russian heritage, and I'll talk more about that later. While this video is mostly about shopping, at the end of the video, I'm going to take you to two very interesting places in the city that you might enjoy seeing as well. One will give you a bird's eye view of Sitka and it has significant historical value, and the other will give you a deep respect for the history of this town and the people that lived here. On any given day during the Alaska cruise ship season, you will see between one and three ships in port. If you arrive here at Sitka Sound, you'll be shuttled to town six miles south by a free shuttle. Don't let the long lines concern you. There are lots of buses and the line moves quickly. If for some reason you don't want to head into town, there are a few shops here at the terminal, starting with this little blue shack right here. Let's have a look inside. This place is so cute with locally made souvenirs. They have the cutest little gnomes in here. They've got tons of wooden magnets and coasters and cutting boards. They have drinkware with Alaska theme or Sitka Alaska theme on them. Definitely worth popping into. Let's head on into the terminal and have a look before we get on the shuttle bus into town. In here, you're going to find shops like Baranoff Jewelers, the Sitka Fur Gallery, Sitka Bazaar, Brenner's, Dockside Provisioners, Captain Bob's, and Actis Clothing. You'll also find restaurants here like Halibut Point, Crab and Chowder, that sounds delicious, Wheelhouse Bar and Grill, and Portside Coffee if you need a coffee right away. You can also book shore excursions here. There is also an ATM and nice clean washrooms. Let's go ahead and get on the shuttle bus and head into town. You will arrive at the visitor center. It's pretty much walking distance to everything and this is where you'll catch the shuttle back to the ship when you're done. The first place I wanna take you is the Alaska Pioneers Home. They have a gift shop in there we're gonna peek in at, but the history of this building is quite interesting as it started out as a log barracks built by the Russians in the 1800s. And then in the 1930s, this concrete structure was built. It's a beautiful old building housing the senior residents of Sitka. Let's have a look at the gift shop. The residents were so happy that we popped in to see their gift shop. All the proceeds benefit them personally. Now, I'm not a huge fan of jewelry shops, but I can sure appreciate someone like Sammy who had this little pop-up shop on the sidewalk. She sold her beautiful creations. She mostly uses copper. She oxidizes the pieces herself. That was very interesting. She shared that with me, how she goes about doing that. And I ended up buying these earrings from her. She had some really beautiful pieces and was just lovely to chat with. If you see her in her little pop-up shop, be sure to stop in. The next place I want to show you is on the ground floor of this building. It's called Forget Me Not. So they offer made in Alaska retail items and something really cool is this old time photo shoot you can have done here. This is a bit of the staging they have set up. I love the money and the guns and the gold. It gives you that gold rush feeling. Be sure to pop in and have a look. They had some really fun things including puzzles and different uh, jams and jellies and things like that that you could take home as well. Really, really cute store. Now, if you're getting hungry and you just wanna grab something quickly, right on Lincoln Street, you'll find some pop-up food tents. I saw stuff like kettle corn, Jesse's Uptown Dogs. Uh, there are a few places that you could get a whole crab. You could get poke bowls, seafood chowder. There was no shortage of food and it all looked amazing. This next door, I could have spent an hour shopping and tasting in. I actually bought a few things here, which I'll show you in a second. So this is a sea salt store with salt hand harvested from the ocean here in Sitka. What an absolutely brilliant idea. So I looked up their story on their website, which I'll link below for you to read. Their story is romantic and it's so interesting how this business came about. So the store is decorated in mid-century modern. You'll not only find salt products here, but you'll also find quality handmade items like wooden cutting boards, cork bowls, 
beautiful serving dishes and they had some very interesting bitters. Bitters are actually used to add depth and complexity to different cocktails. They also had raw apple cider vinegar um, in several flavors and organic chocolate. So I also found these very cool stained glass magnets and I kept circling around the store and looking at them and finally I was like, yes, I need to buy one and I have it on my fridge. I bought the Raven and I also bought the vanilla bean salt. Okay, I really, really liked the sea salt store. The next store we're going to check out is Simply Salmon. Here you're going to find canned, smoked, fresh, and dried salmon. But you'll also see some interesting things like venison pepper sticks. So like pepperoni, but made from venison. You'll find reindeer jerky, teriyaki elk. You'll even find omega-3 rich salmon oils here. And another thing is Simply Salmon will also ship anywhere. This next unique shop we're going to check out is called Fait Accompli, which means accomplished fact. This store is another one that you need to spend some time in. There were so many intriguing things I wanted to take home. And guess what I found here? Earrings and also some beautiful bracelets made by my friend that I met earlier, Sammy. Let's have a look around. Uh, Ashley Ward makes these earrings here and they are made with halibut ear bones, which are known as otolith. And I also have some rockfish otolith, which are a little bit bigger, and they're these feathery bones. And she creates beautiful earrings out of them. I also have a couple pair of earrings uh, left made with the black-tailed deer antler, which are the deer that you find around here. If you've watched my shopping videos in Skagway and Juneau, you heard me say that I had mentioned in a store how unique and beautiful the handmade items in Alaska are. And that native Alaskan reminded me of the long dark winters and how that gives the artists time to really hone their skills and create these beautiful works of art. It really is such a pleasure to shop here and buy things from true crafters and artists that are local and not some knockoff that's made overseas. What's the story with that? Devil's Club Sav is, Devil's Club is a plant that grows wild here in Sitka and it's been used by uh, the indigenous people in these parts for thousands of years, the Tlingit people. And do you think it actually works? It does actually work. I use it and pretty much everybody I know. It's really great. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's really great uh, for arthritic pain. It's also uh, really great for eczema okay. um, and any kind of dry skin. Um, and also it takes the sting out of bug bites okay. really well. Well, that store was amazing. What a neat, neat experience. Definitely check this place out. Okay, let's go check out Alaska Elements. This store is actually quite interesting. They sell handcrafted botanical products that are made here in Sitka. They are small batch blended teas, salts, and drops. They also sell handcrafted body products. So their teas range from normal teas that you would enjoy daily to specialty teas that support healthy blood pressure, healthy BMs, digestion, anti-inflammatory, and I especially love these drops. They're called Dream. They're supposed to promote restful sleep, a calm body, and relaxed muscles. That is something I can get into. The next store, or should I say stores we're going to look at are the Artist's Cove Gallery. There are two stores side by side. They are near St. Michael the Archangel Orthodox Cathedral, right in the middle of Lincoln Street. They are owned by Steve and Katja, and they have some really interesting things, both imported globally, but mostly local items. So I have a thing for kaleidoscopes, and these are actually handmade by Roy Cohen in Israel. You have to check out his website. I'll link it below. He is a fascinating artist and has been making his kaleidoscopes for over 30 years. Like I said earlier, this shop is owned by Steve and Katja, and Katja's work is on display here as well. She is a gifted jewelry designer and her works of art are on display here as well. This store also had some incredible woolly mammoth items and if you watch my videos on shopping in Skagway and Juneau, you know that I have become incredibly intrigued with the woolly mammoth of Alaska, but you'll have to wait until the icy straight point video to see what woolly mammoth item I actually buy. 
The other thing to check out in this store is the really beautiful amylite. An amylite is the mineralized shell of a fossil. So next door to Artist Cove is another store full of stickers. Stickers have become very collectible again, and they must have had thousands of stickers and buttons in this store. And I'm sorry, I did not get the name of it. If you happen to know the name of this store, please leave us all a message in the comments section below. The next store I want to show you is this one. I can't pronounce it, but wow, they had really beautiful native art. In particular, I really liked the skateboards I'm going to show you in a second. Not for me, I'd kill myself on those things, but if you know someone who likes boarding, this has got to be the coolest skateboard around. Grandfather Frost is a Russian Christmas store. This is the place to go if you want to buy a Russian nesting doll or a Matroshka doll. Another really beautiful thing to have a look at is the glass Christmas ornaments that are actually painted from the inside. They're fantastic. The Alaska Gallery has a really good selection of one-of-a-kind hand-carved ulu knives. Look at this one. The salmon which is the handle, is actually carved out of sun-bleached moose antler. These baskets are made from hand-woven grass with carved bone, recycled glass, and bone beads. And if you really want to see some interesting woolly mammoth, you're going to find it here. For just under $9,000, you can own a woolly mammoth tusk. But you can also own a piece of a tooth, or how about the tooth still in the jawbone? That's crazy. Where would I put that? My husband Keith would not be impressed if I brought that home. Let's move on. This is a local cooperative, so different artists are displaying their items here. Totally worth checking out. Really nice stuff. So for sure, you have to go to the Island Artists Gallery located on Lincoln Street. So this gallery is owned and run by a cooperative of 24 local artists who participate to bring you a wide variety of beautiful fine arts and crafts. You will not be disappointed. Just have a look at this artist, Dylan Sprague. His art is done with candle soot. I have never seen anything like that. And then there's Lynn Brandon, who basically paints with fabric. She is also a watercolorist, a sculptor, and a potter. Check out these beautiful bowls by Jim Kirkness. These are some stunning pieces. So be sure to leave yourself some time for this store to have a look around because everything is really beautiful. Okay, here's my next favorite store. Okay, I think I've said that a few times, but this store is really beautiful. The Sitka Lighthouse Company store. I'm such a sucker for a store like this. It has a little something for everyone, from kids to grandma and grandpa, even something for the dog. If your dog is a chewer, buy them a moose antler. They last forever. They are the best and dogs love them. Here it is right here. Alaskan Moosey Chews. Now this isn't necessarily a made in Alaska type of store. There are many things that are made here, but at the same time, the theme of the store is Alaska and kind of the great outdoors. Now one thing I really love is expensive itchy wool blankets, as my family calls them. And this store did not disappoint in that department. They carry authentic Pendleton blankets. Something I've had my eye on for years, but just couldn't splash out the cash for one. My husband Keith isn't with me on this trip, so there's no one stopping me, but you know what? He's going to love it. My problem is trying to choose just one. It's honestly something that you're going to keep for the rest of your life, and this is the one that I bought. I love it. This store also carries lots of different foods, candies, uh, Christmas stuff, cookbooks, and I'll be talking more about Alaskan cookbooks in my Ketchikan shopping video coming up in a few weeks. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on seeing that when I upload it. It's very interesting. Also, be sure to check out the links below in the description if you want to dive deeper into any of the stores that I've talked about in this video. Let's move on to the Russian American Company. I love these hand carved wooden toys. They're so fun. I actually have some that I only bring out at Christmas time. So the Bird of Happiness is made mainly of cedar wood and without the use of glue or other fasteners. They carve thin petals for the bird's wings and tail and then use a special method of spreading and curving them into this shape. So beautiful. 
All right, I found some wooden toy guns. The barrel on those actually spin. They were actually really well made. This store has hundreds of different nesting dolls. They're not cheap, but keep in mind that they are hand painted and they're not mass produced. The Matryoshka dolls were first designed and painted in 1890 near Moscow by two men actually. The name translates to little matron and they've really become a symbol of Russian culture. They also have this traditional red and gold lacquerware. It's a style of Russian art traditionally painted on wood and household items. This store also carried Russian antiques, hand-painted brooches, and something we saw a lot of when we traveled to Eastern Europe was amber. You'll see some of that in my shopping video in Lithuania if you're interested. Sitka has two locations of the fur gallery. We saw one at Sitka Sound cruise ship terminal and one here in downtown Sitka. You know what I really love? The reindeer hides. I actually bought one of these um, when we went to Finland. We went shopping in Helsinki and you can watch my video on that if, if you're enjoying these shopping videos. Um, by the way, if you're still watching this video, you know what I would love? If you would give me a thumbs up. That really goes a long way in the YouTube world. Okay, let's just have one last look at the woolly mammoth stuff before I show you those two cool places I talked about at the beginning of the video. I do find this just so fascinating. And like I said in my Skagway shopping video, it's not often that you get to see, touch, and even own something like this from so long ago. The woolly mammoth has been preserved so well because of Alaska's Arctic permafrost. It just blows my mind how much woolly mammoth stuff they have here on display and what they've done with it. It's just so fascinating. All right, we are moving on from shopping and we're going to be climbing the stairs to Baranoff Castle State Historic Site. It's right near the O'Connell Bridge. It's walking distance from downtown, fully accessible. So this area is referred to as Castle Hill and this park is one of the most historically significant sites in Alaska. So between 1804 and 1867, Russians occupied this site. In 1867, on the top of Castle Hill, Alaska was officially transferred from Russia to the United States. Castle Hill is a state historic site and also designated as a national historic landmark. From the top, you'll have outstanding views of downtown Sitka and the waterfront, and you can read all about the history on the interpretive panels posted around the walkway. The other cool thing I want to point out is the volcano that you can see from here called Mount Edgecombe. It's been dormant but is now showing signs of reawakening and I'm going to add a little link to a, the Alaska Beacon where they talk about that below in the description. The next place we're going to go and this is still walking distance from downtown as well is the Russian Orthodox Cemetery. You will find it along Observatory Street. Now, what is so interesting about this cemetery is that it's situated in the rainforest. This is a 200 year old Russian cemetery and it's still used for the Russian Orthodox parishioners of St. Michael's Church. And you're going to find some interesting headstones here made of wood and of course stone. And some of the wooden ones were actually made from the ballasts of old Russian ships. This is a really peaceful place and really speaks of the history of Sitka. If you love history, definitely take a walk over here and have a look. Thank you so much for watching right to the end of this video on shopping in Sitka, Alaska. I have a few other shopping videos you might want to check out like shopping in Juneau and Skagway. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on seeing Icy Straight Point and Ketchikan when I post those. I've had an amazing day shopping in Sitka today. I've really enjoyed this port of call. There's a lot of really, really unique shops. Thank you so much for joining me today on Tina Girl Travels.